Hello grade 10s, welcome to part 2 of you guys giving me the chemical name if I give you the chemical formula, which you can see over here. We did example number 1 to number 5 in the previous video. You need to check that out. I say some things in there that you absolutely need to know. You may not be able to do these if you don't listen to that video. So go ahead, check that out first if you need to, but let's get going with these 5 examples. So, as we mentioned, the anion goes last its name changes to Ied. The cation goes first. In number six over here, our cation is BE, which is beryllium. This one is an interesting one to spell. Just try and get it right. If you don't get it perfect, it's all right. We're not gonna penalize you if you forget an L or whatever. Beryllium. Cation's name stays the same. BR is bromine. But when it bonds, when it forms an ion, it becomes the bromide ion. Easy peasy. Number seven, the cation is calcium. Ca is calcium. O is oxygen, but when it forms an anion, it becomes the oxide ion. Remember the anion's name changes and ends in ide. This one looks weird, but K is potassium, the cation, and I is iodine, but when it bonds, it becomes iodide. It ends in ide. I mean, can you guys see the pattern? K is potassium again, potassium, and S is sulfur. But remember, when it bonds, it becomes sulfide. Now remember not to get confused between sulfur, forming sulfide ions, and sulfates, and sulfites. Do you hear the difference? Sulfide is sulfur ions, sulfide ions, sulfide that's different to sulfate and sulfites we'll get to those in another video in our last one over here na is sodium and n remember it's nitrogen but it forms nitride n's an ide not nitrite or nitrate those are something different we'll deal with those in a video to come now before i leave you for this video i just want to point out something in this example number eight we've got potassium but it's one potassium right look at example nine we've got k2 now why remember these numbers refer to how many of those atoms i have in that compound so in potassium iodide, it's one potassium atom for every one iodine, one to one. In potassium sulfide, I've got two potassiums for every sulfur. The reason why it's different is because of the charge of the element that it's bonded with. So in potassium iodide, potassium's charge is plus one, iodine's charge is minus one. That gives me zero neutral compound. In potassium sulfide, potassium's charge is plus one. Sulfur's charge is minus two. Look on the periodic table for that information. If you don't want to know what I'm talking about, you need to go watch the previous videos in this playlist. So potassium's charge is plus one. Sulfur's charge is minus two. That means I need two potassiums for every sulfur. Remember, if you have a charge of minus two, it means that you can accept two electrons. Potassium only has one electron to give away. That means I need two potassiums. That's why it's K2S. Now what I just did here, we're going to be doing in the next video. So if I didn't get, if you didn't get that, it's okay. Just try and follow me in the next video. I'll see you guys there. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video if you enjoyed this lesson.